Hello and welcome to Once More with the Feeling, No Self, Human Cyborg Relations, Episode 1, Millwall 2. <laughs> That's the Millwall, isn't it? It's always Millwall. Why is it always Millwall? I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, this is the newest EP from New Metal slash Metalcore slash some techno metal influences band no self um this is a bit of a new experience for us because we actually got given the ep directly by the bassist of no self which is I was like hey check out our cool stuff so we did it was basically i got talking to him sort of saying I'd be interested in covering this stuff, and he basically gave me their media release version of the EP. So it was quite a different experience and something very new for the show, and I will be linking him directly to the video once it's completed. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, I should have really organised a few questions to ask him, but we literally had no time to do anything. <laughs> it was sort of like every so I was able to very occasionally message him to double check a few things but for the most part both me and Pierce just didn't have time to properly sort ourselves out but it comes to having a job ah. <laughs> well two jobs in your case it's like one technically hasn't started yet but should be starting some point next week they haven't actually given me a confirmed date yeah but anyway, um, yeah, this is a bit bit of a curiosity because the band has only released. Uh, they've re this is the third EP they've released, and they've released one full length album over the past fifteen years, which is unusual for any band. Yeah, most bands tend to at least release things every few years. Yeah, I mean. The only instances of it being a long time between releases that I can think of are the ones that we make constant jokes about. <laughs> Tool. <laughs> well, Tool, Sisters of Mercy... Well, The Cure haven't released really now in the last nine years either. Mm. Yeah, but that's about the same... That That's not much longer than it took between Death Magnetic and Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Mm, I guess. But anyway... Yeah. Um, as it's an EP, it's, it is, to be expected, quite short, but I, I'd say it's one of those cases of it works well for being short. Hmm. There's no filler, as I think. Yeah. There's a good school of these days. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. <laughs> hey, you look at your ear hornings, you can hear. Um, but yeah, there's no filler on this EP, and I'm kind of stumbling over my words here. Well, I'm not sure where you're going, you're worse than hell. But, um, yeah, seven, seven songs, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, surprisingly varied, actually, because I mean, when it comes to new metal, the thing that most people have problems with is it does have a a very, um, specific sound. Yeah. But here, there seems to be a good variety of stuff. Some things sound different to others. It's kind of, there's quite a few other influences I can tell there as well. Mm. I mean, some of it comes to mind. Um, sort of other comes to mind, I think. You mentioned Cell Dweller around the same time. Mm. Yeah, Cell Dweller. Uh, also, uh, sort of Spine Shank influences, and they do yeah, note yeah, right. they do note Spine Shank as one of their. Well, they describe it as artists we also like. <laughs> but I. It certainly means artists that gave us inspiration. Yeah. Although that said, um. Primus was supposedly the inspiration for Alien Ant Farm, which is one of those, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> How? Totally the same band, <laughs> But uh, definitely Spineshank, Cell Dweller, um, well, I wouldn't necessarily say Cell Dweller's an influence, more that Cell Dweller have a very similar sound. Hmm. They do sound quite similar. I say only have you listened to two or so of the Cell Dweller's albums. Yeah. Uh, how long have Cell Dweller been around? I'm not sure. Oh, jeez. Uh, at least a decade. Yeah. It's a bit longer than that, even. Yeah. But Cell Dweller are probably just contemporaries of No Self as opposed to influences. Possibly. But we won't do it by specifically ask the band directly. <laughs> oh! Actually, they've been around since 1999, so. 
Och så då, ja, yeah, I've been maybe around quite a while. Mm. Uh, it was at least early 2000s. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, these guys, I guess. <laughs> um, one of the things that um, benefits this EP is the fact that you can tell there's a lot of different influences. You know, you, you can tell that they've tried to mix up sounds as opposed to going with the very standard new metal sound that makes you go, oh, for fuck's sake, stop your whining. <laughs> also using actual kind of screams as well. Yeah. Just quite often something that new metal doesn't quite verge into. Yeah, the the screams that you tend to normally get in new metal are more the Chester Bennington, I've got a frog in my throat and I'm trying to squeeze it out. <laughs> Um, that's my favourite song, I'm not entirely sure. The one that first stood out to me was probably New Disease. Yeah. Although the, the name bugs me, simply because it's a bit new. Uh, I thought it was New Metal. Yeah, and the thing is, you say that, but how many of the songs on the EP have weird, weirdly spelled titles? Eh, technically only one. I mean, one was a Back to the Future reference. Hmm. Out of time. I didn't really... That's a Back to the Future reference? Pretty sure it is. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the um, number plate for the DeLorean, isn't it? Uh, let me just... Yes, it is! I thought so. I'm pretty certain that the um, EP title is a reference to Star Wars. Yeah, now now that you've mentioned the Out of Time one, yeah, I, I think it could very well be. Um, the metal band, it's a bunch of nerds. Yeah, well, how many metal bands aren't nerds? <laughs> I mean, let's see. Um, Cannibal Corpse, the front man, is a WoW addict. Yep. Devin Townsend, well. <laughs> Devin Townsend is Devin Townsend. <laughs> yeah, he he is nerd metal. I mean, it's the same guy that posted pit, uh, pictures of him playing horse dating sims on his phone. Yeah. I'm doing it unironically at that. Mm. Um, the front man of Psycho Stick regularly streams uh, various... Well, he's been doing Dragon's Quest. Yeah, he's been doing well, so. Yeah, um, Yeah, the intersection between nerds and metal is so overlapping. It's kind of insane. Well, there's an amount of bands that do you know, have music with lyrics inspired by nerdy stuff. Star One comes to mind as well. Also, the front man... For Dimmu Borgir. Yep. Straight up there. there. Yeah, he's named Shagrath after one of the orcs in Lord of the Rings. I think Lord of the Rings costs over a lot. Yeah. It isn't, it isn't about like Battle Law, for example. Uh, Battle Law, <laughs> Nightwish, yeah. Dimmu Borgir. I'm on a math being named after it. <laughs> anyway, on to this. Um, yeah. I think, funnily enough, Out of Time is probably my favourite on the album. I'm also a pretty big fan of Control Z as well. Mm. I, I'd say Control Z, the way the album progresses, Control Z is a good point to end because it's it's called episode one, so I'm presuming that the next EP or album they do will be episode two. Mm, you would think so. Then of course you've also got other bands like Pain of Salvation who did, uh, gosh I can't remember that one. I don't know, shit. But they're selling part one, and they've released about five or six albums since, none of which have been part two, or whatever. The version of Winter Sun's Time One, and their new album is not Time Two. Yeah, that that's one of those. Seriously, how many years has it been since Time One? Maybe like five. Something like that. I think it's 2012. Two thousand. Yes, yeah, two thousand and twelve. Right, I can oh. I can actually check that because I have the album. They're finally releasing a new album this year, and it's not time to. <laughs> uh, yeah, two thousand and twelve. But yeah, um, I think also I can. I'm not sure whether this is the case, but I can kind of hear some Covenant influences in the sound. Uh, yeah, I guess so. This is very much a case of there's a lot of influence here, a lot of bits here and there sound like other bits and. Mm. They seem to have melded them together into their own kind of thing. Yeah. This is why I'm... Whilst they classify themselves as new metal, I'd say that they're much more than that. Yeah. 
because they found a way to properly blend. It, it's kind of like um, how we we don't really tend to classify Hurt as a new metal band for the most part because they do so much more than just the typical new metal stuff. I think it's the case of of core. That's what they are. But there's so many other bits and bobs here and there stuck to it. Yeah. I mean, if you get a cat and cover it in toast, then it's still a cat. But it looks different. <laughs> That is... I get the analogy, but that is so bizarre. <laughs> just just that visual. Wow. Well. Um, uh, what rating would you give it? Um, I would give it a 3.5. Yeah, I, I was... Because I wouldn't say it's, you know, it's an amazing EP, but it's solid throughout, and there's nothing here I don't like. Yeah. I think it's above average. Yeah. I was going to say 3.5, possibly a 4, because there are some bits that really do grab me. And it is an EP that does keep my attention, which is which is the most vital thing. I mean, that that's why um, that's one of the reasons why, whilst there were songs I absolutely hated on the Nickelback album, I wasn't too damning about it because... It did keep my attention throughout, hmm. but yeah, I'd, I'd say I'm I'm more inclined to go for a four than a three point five. But it's so I suppose it, averaging it out, it'd be like three point seven five between the two of us. Yeah, but I'll be interested to see what the the next release is in seventeen years time. <laughs> uh, well, they are apparently sort of knuckling down with their output and being a lot more active. I'll be, I'm fine if it takes a while, as long as it's good. So Yeah. You're going to release one thing every five years and it's decent, it's better than what's one thing every six months and it being shit. Yeah, I mean, there are so many bands and artists that fall into that category of if you just gave it some time, then you'd be so much better. Hmm. Like Nickelback and Rihanna and so many other bands that it's sort of like... All you need to do is take a little bit of time. Well, to be fair, Rihanna would be improved just by having, you know, someone else making the music and having her use her vocals properly. Actually, that's that's depressingly accurate because... because the music sucks, but her vocals are good. Yeah. So, you do vocals with better music and you're doing work. Mm. Um, but anyway, um, this EP is out, so definitely go check it out. I'm not sure if the tracks have all been uploaded to YouTube, but it's worth investigating and it's worth checking out the band in general. I've heard a few tracks aside from this EP and they are a solid band. So definitely check this out. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, we will go in search of other stuff they've done because, yeah, I've enjoyed what I've heard here. Mm. I'm always a fan of finding new music. Yeah. Um... One thing that's interesting to know and rather amusing for me is where they're from. Is it Canada again? No. Um, oh. It's Florida. Okay. Now, the reason that's amusing for me is because of another new metal band, a very well-known new metal band that comes from Florida, or at least the front man... Well, front man child is a better way of terming it. Have you guessed where I'm going with this? Uh, um, no. It's an amusing turn of phrase. Limp Biscuit. Oh, shit. I just did not realise that he was from Florida. Yeah. So, if you like, this is basically the karmic, you know... The comic upside for having to deal with the hell of Limp Bizkit. Coming from your state. Do you think there's also plenty of other hells that seem to exist in Florida? Do we not consider it to be a perfectly good place? No, I see you complaining about Florida. Yeah, but um, yeah. If you're not sure, this is another case of if you're not sure about new metal but still want to give it a go. No Self are a good band to look into, because they're not your typical new metal band. In fact, I, I, I'm still iffy about that term for them. I, I feel... Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know why I describe them as, but new metal is not really what came to my mind first. 
I, I'd say technical metal would be a better way of terming it. Possibly, yeah. But I mean, when I think of new metal, you know, I think of bands like Corn, Touch Me Down, Limp Bizkit, yeah, stuff like that. Mm. Disturbs, all that kind of stuff. But this doesn't sound like that. Yeah, it sounds more. As I say, it sounds more like Spineshank or Covenant or um, Cell Dweller or bands like that. It doesn't really have that new metal feel about it. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I think. You know what? I'm just going to put it like this. No self or a genre unto themselves. <laughs> no self core. They've blended genres and types of metal in such a way that I could. I could imagine that if they get really big, you know, if if they suddenly explode in noticeability and all that sort of thing, then they'll start to become a standard for genres as opposed to just a variation on the genre. Mm. But yeah, definitely check this out. Uh, not 100% certain what the next review will be. Uh, in theory, at least, that will be with the guest co-host that I keep threatening. Um, <laughs> I'm sure she'd appreciate you threatening her. Or with her. <laughs> um, after that, we'll probably be covering the next... Funnily enough, we'll be covering the new Cell Dweller album, because that comes out on the 28th, I believe. Yeah. Well, presumably we'll be doing a uh, quick live review. Mm. Oh yeah, um, actually that's a good point. The next review will be a live review of Necronomidal. Everyone's mostly unknown, but happened to be somehow performing in London metal and synthwave influenced idol group. Do you actually have had some songs written by Dan Terminus? There it is. There is one interesting that happened. That's on Tuesday, so... Yeah. So, review itself will probably be uploaded on Thursday. Is that sooner than you think? Hmm. Anyway, that's it for this episode. It's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from me. Just no! No! I think I'm losing my mind!